Well, we've got, um, we've got a lot of people out tonight. Um, we got people traveling. The Gibsons are in Alaska. Uh, they're on a they're on a cruise with their uh, with the family, and I told them to post pictures, but I haven't seen very many of them posted since they uh, left uh, Seattle. But uh, and Todd Todd and uh, Kim, Todd is out sick tonight, so we'll be um, praying for them. He's they uh, they just celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary, and so um, they they. Uh, they uh, went somewhere. I don't know where they went because because they just got back today. But he's gonna. They just closed on a house today. Praise God. They were they were renting a big old house and now they're actually owners of a house in Rockwall and um, just a much better much better uh, much better deal. So we praise God for that. And uh, my son is here. Yes, I am a dad, and it's awesome. I love it. I love looking at that baby. So, um, God is good. Amen. And we have some uh, some special friends with us tonight. Eric, whoa, whoa. <laughs> from uh, Ch Ch with Change Agent from, uh, you know, he's got that Liberia hat on. I told him he looks good with that hat. He needs to wear that more often. I think he'd get more support in his ministry if he wore that hat more often. Especially around here. But, uh, and he brought a special, uh, a special friend, a son of his, James. I got to meet James while we were in Liberia. Um, I think we were, we were doing a revival and it was that, it was the school that, that, um, that we had the, just the blessing to be a part of, to build and to, uh, and they're actually overseeing it and, and a couple thousand kids there that are going to school that, that wouldn't be in school right now that, um, are getting an education. And uh, James had come in that night. I, 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 I remember it was one of the most touching things I saw while I was there. Um, you know, Eric, Eric has pastors and leaders that they, when they give themselves to the ministry, they don't, they don't get a salary. You know, they just give themselves to the work, but they really, they give themselves to the work of the ministry. And out of that, they, they train, they equip, they're, they're 24 seven, they don't get time off. And um, James just won the lottery. He won the lottery. Now, let me tell you something. The lottery in Liberia, they draw your name, and uh, if you win the lottery, you get to come to the, the States. That's the prize. And, you know, God is doing something amazing in this city, and, and Eric, just change agent, just moved to uh, Dallas, which when we met, I told him, I said, you're going to move to Dallas. Your ministry is going to move to Dallas. And, um, and he's here, and the ministry is moving to Dallas, and it's thriving it's growing. Um, we're seeing God do amazing things. The ambassadors coming to the city. We're gonna. Uh, we're praying for just great connections and for people, kings, to really get in alignment with that. And uh, that we're gonna see education and schools built all over the nation of Liberia. We're gonna see water, fresh water, north, northern to southern to western to eastern borders by 2020. That's a goal, and I, from what I understand, that's uh, they're ahead of schedule. And. Um, and just it's just amazing and seeing James here is is just reminds me that it's not just about Liberia it's about here too and you guys have something to give to us you know and, and to give to the Americans that a, a message of of the goodness of God you know Paul says I was I was begotten to you through the gospel and um, when we realize that our relationships have been begotten to us by the gospel by the good news, we'll value our relationships much more than what we really do. And so I value our, my relationship with Eric because I know it's sovereign. And I know if I, if I didn't, I know God would strike me down. And, uh, but he's a dear brother, and uh, we welcome here tonight. And uh, we bless Change Agent, man. James, we bless you, man. We love you. You're special to us. and We're, we're praying for, uh, for you guys. Oh, look at this. He just walked in. What's up, man? So God's good, isn't he? Listen, I'm telling you something. It's going to rain. It is going to rain. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain in our city. And um, it may not look the way you think it's going to look, but it's going to rain. And I'm excited to be a part of what God's doing. And I'm excited to walk with each and every one of you uh, and be on the front lines of what God's doing. And... I'm also excited to push you out into it when you don't think you're ready for it and throw you out into the deep end when you think you're 
already too deep. I love doing that because the Lord loves it. And uh, that's where we meet Jesus. Amen. Came to an end. Isn't God good? Listen. I look at my son every night now and I just, man, I'm just amazed at God. I just cry and uh, it's overwhelmed at his goodness, his promises. And um, God's given us a promise for this city. And I've seen the, I've seen the, I've seen the promise flesh out. You know, it says faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. And um, I didn't see my child for eight years, but I saw him in the spirit. And I've seen him. I've seen the word become flesh. And uh, listen, we will see the move of the spirit become flesh in the city. You believe that? You better believe it. You better because if not, you'll miss it. God doesn't want you to miss it because he wants you to be part of it. So as we just stand up just tonight, we just give honor to God. God, we honor you. We bless the name of the Lord tonight. And Lord, we just thank you that we can come here tonight and that you've given us this place to freely worship you in spirit and truth. And we say, Lord, did your everything we ever hoped for and everything that we not yet understand and your goodness surpasses everything that we can. We can't measure your goodness. You confound us when we try and you overwhelm us when we, when we just look upon and gaze upon the face of, of just your kindness. I thank you for your mercy tonight, Lord, that they're new and they're refreshing and your spirit is very much alive and moving over our city and brooding over our lives. And I thank you for every saint that is in the distance of my voice here and in the spirit. And God, we call them forth to align by the word of the Lord. And so we thank you that the word of the Lord is echoing all throughout this city. The watchmen are waking, the intercessors are waking up and coming forth. And Lord, we thank you that there's a great move, a great anticipation, a great hunger for the things of God. And we thank you that's all because of you. And we just lift up that name that's, there's just no other name but the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would be the only one tonight when we leave, tonight and tomorrow, that you would be the first and the last, that we would be your first love and that you would be our first love. So everything that holds that place, just let it fall and fade away. And let us fall into the arms of a loving God tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you so much that when we met you, you just brought us in and you didn't ask us to be perfect. You just said, I love you right where you are. I thank you that that's not ever changed with who you are. We just thank you so much for your love that never ends. It just gets better. It gets better and better with age. Amen. We just want you to do what you want to do. That we just want to trust you. Sometimes we think that we know more than you do. Yet you're patient with us to say, I got this thing. Just lead with me. Just walk with me. So, Father, we just want to take your hand as we begin tonight. And just say, Lord, we trust you. We welcome you to lead in every area of our lives. Because everywhere you lead is a good place. You take care of all the details. Because you know what you're doing. So we just thank you so much for leading and guiding us in our lives. And thank you for your patience and your grace. We pray these things in Jesus' name.
So stay right there. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, just keep, give me, keep, keep giving me some of those keys real quick. We're going to do something real quick. Now, the Lord is a giver. He gives good gifts. And the Lord's giving gifts away right now. Some of you realize that and some of you don't. But I want you to just close your eyes and ask the Lord what gift he wants to give you right now. Just some of you will get an impression in your mind. Some of you might have a vision. Some of you may have a knowing. Some of you might have a sensing. God speaks in manifold ways. He's a diverse God. And as he shows you that, just gaze upon it. Unwrap it. Receive it. And know this. What God gives to you, he makes through you. So what's he giving you? Ask him what it's for. When you sit at the feet of Jesus and you receive things by his spirit, by faith, you get to receive them, but you are responsible for them. And what you receive, now you can steward. And what you receive individually, now you can release corporately and regionally, and you can give it away. So what's he giving you? Is it peace? Is it rest? Is it patience? Kindness? Meekness? Humility? Inheritance, understanding, wisdom, revelation, fear of the Lord, dreams, visions. He's got so many gifts, storehouses, just gives them, gives and gives and gives and gives. If you've never done this before, this is something you can do every day. You can meditate on everything because he's constantly wanting to give more than you're willing to ask. He says, you have not because you ask not. Amen. So how many of you just got something? Raise your hand if you just got something. Don't be bashful. Yes, he's the giver of every good gift. Unwrap it. Present it become one with it you know there's a there's something in the body of Christ that that is such a lie I'm just gonna just we'll just go ahead and just expose it for what it is right now how many of you like cheeseburgers okay if I want a cheeseburger and you're my friend and I say man I'd really like a cheeseburger what are you gonna do Kirsten, you gonna get me a cheeseburger? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. God is the same way. If you're waiting for something for God and you're talking to God, do you think that there's an appointed time for that to happen? Yeah, there is. But if I want a cheeseburger and she hears me that I want a cheeseburger and she doesn't go and get it for me, and guess what? If I can't go, I'm not going to get it. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that some of your delay is because you're waiting on something that's already been given. And so God has already given these things and we wait and we wait and we wait and we say, you know, we're just going to wait on the Lord 
Well, some, sometimes we are waiting on the Lord, but I guarantee you a lot more times than not, He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to meet somebody else's need. There's a difference between a, a word. There's different kinds of words. There's a preceding word and a proceeding word. There's something that precedes something and there's something that proceeds something. Meaning that if I give a word to Scott about something that's already going on in his life, it was already going on, it's preceding. But if I declare the word of the Lord, boom, over that, proceeding, calling it forth, not as it is, but as it will be. Because the word lives in me, I'm declaring it, and I'm shifting that because the word, God says he spoke in, in, the, in the darkness. And, he, and as, ever since he spoke, things are still being called into existence. So I'm saying that you need to be calling things into existence. You're waiting on God to do this. No, God is waiting on you to get the word of the Lord, to get it and declare it and call it forth. Not as it is, but as it shall be. Okay? So you see an issue? Well, what's God saying about it? Receive the answer. Receive it. Become one with it. Declare it. Watch it come to pass. Does that make sense? This is your responsibility as a, as a son of God. This is great. It's a great responsibility. It's a great privilege. And guess what? It's even in your Bible. Imagine that. I'll read your verse. So I don't want to just stand up here and say this. And you say, well, it's not, you know, I don't know about that. Hmm. You have heard these things foretold. Now you see this fulfillment. And will you not bear witness to it? I show you specified new things from this time forth, even hidden things kept in reserve, which you have not known. Some of you that were asking for the gifts that you just received, they were like a storehouse and they've been kept in reserve for you, waiting for you to ask for them. And they've been waiting there for a while. And you could have had them yesterday. You could have had them the day before that. You could have had them last year. And there's still more waiting for you to grab a hold of. And guess what's waiting on these people out here they don't know the Lord are waiting on you to grab a hold of those gifts. To become one with that gift because that's the gift that's going that you've been destined to walk with to, to bring the kingdom of God to this city. To walk in your destiny. To walk in who God has called you to be. Not who you are, but who God says you are. Some, some of you don't, you just have a bad understanding about yourself. And God wants to deal with that and clear that up that you're not who you think you are. But it says this, they are created now. Everybody say now. That was not good enough. Now. Called into being by the prophetic word. And not long ago and before today, you have never heard of them. Lest you should say, behold, I knew them. Huh? That is Isaiah 45 or Isaiah 48. Verse 7, Amplified. Hallelujah. One scripture reference for the night. We'll have many more, but that's a good one, yeah? It's a great, great thing to, to understand that word. Because when you do understand that, then you understand that the kingdom. And the kingdom is everything. He said it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom, right? He said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What, did, what were we just doing the last hour? We were worshiping the Lord Jesus. We were hallowing his name. We were saying, God, you're worthy. And his presence was coming in this room and he was, he was ministering to you. He was strengthening you. He was, he was um, telling you things about himself. As some of you felt his, he felt his presence. Amen? Did some of you feel his presence? And when you sit at his feet... He ministers to you so that you can, he can strengthen you to go out and do the very things he's commissioned you to do. If you don't know his presence, you'll never be able to walk with him. You'll never be able to do great things for God if you don't walk, walk with him because you'll just be in your flesh all the time. So he says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, what? 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we have got to bring the kingdom to earth. Now how do we do that? Well, in Ephesians 2, 6, it says that you have been seated in heavenly places. What does that mean? It means that, see this chair? This chair is empty. But there's a chair in heaven with your name on it. And it says that if when, when Christ was raised and resurrected and he sat at the right hand of God, that he, there's a chair for you there. And it says you're seated in heavenly places. And then when you commune with the Lord and you go before the Lord and you meditate on the Lord, you actually ascend in his resurrection and you sit in heavenly places. And there's three dimensions. There's a dimension here on earth and there's a dimension between uh, um, earth and heaven. And that's called the second heaven. That's where all the warfare is going on. That's where the angels are ascending to and fro, the good angels and bad angels. And they're, they're, there's war going on. And above that, there's God in heaven. And that's where your seat is. And so many of us never, never, never walk and sit in, our, sit in heavenly places. Therefore, you can never walk and bring the kingdom from, from heaven to here. Because... We live in our flesh. We don't believe the word of God. We don't believe who he, what he says about us. We, we, we struggle with iniquity. We struggle with transgressions. We struggle with all these things and all these lies about the enemy said over your life that you don't believe the truth about who God really says you are. Right? That's, that is the reality tonight. Is that God wants you to believe who he says you are. And there's a company of people in this room that you're going to take this seat. You're going to sit in heavenly places. And God is going to fill himself up with you. He's going to put you on. Like he did Gideon. And when he puts you on, he shows you off here. And when he shows you off, people come to the brightness of your rising. They end up having encounters with the Lord and they get saved and they get delivered and they get set free. And they want to know this man, Jesus. They want to know this, this, this son of God. They want to know this one who has eyes like a burning fire, this, this glorious one, because the glory of God is as, as you have tapped into the glory of God, because you sitting next to to Jesus and all the angels bowing before him saying, holy, 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 you're so worthy. You get to go there every day and sit there with him and you get to partake of what they're doing and partake of his, of his heavenly nature. And we get to display it here. You know, the angels are envious of you. Do you know that? Do you know that's part of the book of Hebrews was because the angels were envious of you and I. He says, what is man that, that you're so mindful of him? That you made him a little lower than the angels. And it's like they, they, they want to work with you. They want their messengers sent to those who inherit salvation. And you get to partake of that glory by sitting in heavenly places. You know what the glory is? It's Jesus. Jesus is the glory of God. But you know what really the glory you break it down to? It's called substance. If you see somebody that has substance on their life, it's because they've been with Jesus. And when they've been with Jesus, people know it. I don't need to tell you I've been with Jesus. People knew when Moses would have been with Jesus. He had to put a veil over his face. You know? People, people see the love. They feel the love. They're drawn to it. And, they're, and if they're drawn to Jesus, and you, you have the substance of Jesus living inside of you. And as the substance grows, he breaks out of you. You start having encounters Revelation, people are drawn to you. You become a leader. God's looking for a company of people that will say yes to carrying his substance, that will be obedient, that will have radical faith and radical obedience. And let me just throw you something right here. Did you know it's by grace through faith that we're saved? Where does the grace come from? Where does it come from? God. Where does faith come from? God. So guess what? It's not about you. We say, I just need more faith. How are you going to work it up? It's not yours. 
You know, the disciples asked for more faith. God, give us more faith. You have not because you ask not. We will not be a company of people that will, not, will ask not. When we ask for war and we receive it, we'll ask for cities and God will give us cities. When we ask for nations, he'll give us nations. When he asks for the world, he'll give us the world because he already has. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would perish may have eternal life. Right? This is the gospel. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverance. There is a move of the spirit coming to this city, I'm telling you. Like we've never seen. It's going to rain. It is going to rain. I, I, the couple of nights ago, I'm in, my, I'm in my sleep and a friend came to me and started quoting a scripture. And it was, it was Hebrews 3, 4. And it says, um, every house is built by someone. But, and we're, say, we're saying it at the time, same time. Every house is built by someone, but its builder and maker is God. I'm telling you something tonight. God's building a house. I've resisted it. Many of you know I have, but God has brought me to my knees. And um, God's building a house. He's building his, his, his body in this, in this city. And I'm saying yes to it. What does that mean? I don't know. God says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So it's his responsibility, not mine. But I'm saying yes to him, his government being established and leaders coming forth and his ecclesia being established in you. And that God would get an Ephesians 4 company of people that would be, that would be um, equipped for the work of the ministry. You would be equipped. You would be sent out. You would be trained. You would be commissioned. You would have favor. You would go to the nations. You would be the bright and shining burning ones. And you would be the one that would be on display, not the leaders. Okay? So I'm going to be sharing some um, vision with you guys over the next few weeks about things that the Lord has, has said and things that he wants to happen and how, um, how that's going to happen. I don't know, um, but I know he's going to do it, and I know he's going to do it through each, each and every one of you. Um, we're going to be appointing leaders. Listen, everybody in the room's a leader, um, but God appoints leaders. We don't. You know, you, you, everyone in you has a different call in your life and, and, you know, we, we champion whatever the call in your life is and, and whatever God says is, is, is just what it, what it is. It's a privilege, isn't it? It's a walk in, walk in, walk in the calling of God and be appointed by God. And he says, you grow in favor with God and then you grow in favor with man. So if people want to be appointed, grow in favor with God. You will be. And, um, so you know, I'll be, I'm excited to share some things with you. You know, Todd's out tonight. Um, he's sick and Todd, uh, Eric's out tonight. So I don't want to get too much into that. But um, God is building, you know, I hate structure. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not a structure guy. But um, we need some structure. Praise God. We've got some people God's given us to help us with that. I'm not a structure guy. If, if you want structure, probably don't come to me. You know, it's just not going to happen. But uh, I love the Lord. Praise, I love the Lord. And um, it's all good. So, or somewhere, something else I was going to say to you guys. Is that exciting? Who wants to be part of a move of God? Yeah. Because that's what this is all about. If it's not... If it's not for that, might as well just go ahead and go home right now. If it's not, if his spirit, if it's not about, if it's not about seeking, seeking God, if it's not about him, if it's not about him showing up in a city, let's just go home. Let's just pack up our Bibles and go home and play church. That's just, you know, we can do that. But uh, that's not what God wants. He wants a people who will say yes. Uh, sold out, a remnant, a company of people that the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro looking for those that, that he can find, find that, are, that are committed, that will say yes no matter what the cost is. Some of us are struggling with that because we don't necessarily know how to sell out. Um, but 
when you see Jesus, when you know him, it's easy to sell out. It's easy. And, and I would have told you a couple of years ago, a, pa- a pastor that I sat under for years, he said, he said, if you counted the cost, what do you mean, man? I, I'm, I mean, I've encountered Jesus. He's awesome. I love Jesus. I, I get to be in the ministry. I get to, I get to talk about Jesus. I get to preach. I get to, see, get to see all these things happen. I get to see all these miracles. I get to meet guys like Eric and walk with leaders that have a vision to change nations. And why would I not say no to that? But I didn't understand that until probably the last six months about the cost. There's a cost to what we're going after. I've been trimming my trees. You know, it's, the baby's been home. And, and I've just been like just getting my house cleaned up, you know, and just getting everything perfect. And, and while I'm trimming the trees, these branches are falling on my head. And they're, they're you know, I'm bleeding. Like my hands start bleeding. And I just, I bled a lot this week. And, uh, and the Lord's just telling me, yeah, it's what, when you start trimming on people, when you start, get, you know, uh, preparing leaders and, um, and equipping them and cutting them back and bringing them into the chastening of the Lord, and, and um, that's what happens. You know, people don't like being corrected. They don't like being held accountable. Do you know that? They don't like being, because it's like, who are you to tell me what to do? You God? No, I'm not God, but I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I bring the sword of the Lord, you know, in love. People don't like that. Because they don't, they really honestly, people don't want to hear the truth, guys. You guys know that? But faithful are the wounds of a friend. Deceitful are the kisses of many. How many of you love truth? How many of you love truth? You better love truth. Because this is going to be a company of people that love truth. And they love you enough to tell you the truth because it's, it's, I remember growing up, I'd always tell people the truth. I, I didn't even know the Lord and uh, people didn't like it. And I always got frustrated. I'm like, why are these people just going down this road? I didn't realize, you know, then I was prophetic. I knew I didn't know it, but I was. And um, I was always counseling people. I was always trying to help people and they didn't listen. And I'm just like, Hebrews says this, do not harden your hearts. Hear my voice. Do not harden your hearts. Or you're going to wander around in the wilderness. So love truth. Or guess what? You won't enter into the promised land because of unbelief. And doubt. Is that true? It's in your Bible. It's in Hebrews. Chapter 3. Y'all sure are quiet. Yeah, this is a lot easier when y'all are giving me a little bit of a nod here and there, a clap, hand clap, a amen, praise God, preach it. We need some more, we need some more color here and here. Eric, we need some more color in here, man. These people need to, hey, maybe that's why you're here. Hey, that you're supposed to help us, really. Because you got listen, you go to Africa, these guys know how to worship. They know how to praise the Lord. We we we're way too just serious. We just sit around and we're like, oh, we're serious. <laughs> you know, we could really learn how to how to rest in the Lord. It's, it's good. It's good. Well, I've got about five things I want to share with you guys, and I won't share it all, but Um, I've been reading Hebrews and I I really want to talk to you tonight about living out of your spirit, not out of your soul. And, uh, what does that mean? Well, you have a, you're a spirit that lives in a body that has a soul. Do you know that? Do you know that? You are a spirit that lives in a body that has a soul. Now, what is your soul? It's your mind, it's your will, and your emotions. What is going to prevent you from taking your seat in heavenly places? Living out of your soul. Living out of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Because God gave you the mind of Christ. He says, Paul says, who can know 
Who can know the things of God? Who can know the mind of God? And he says, we can because we have the mind of Christ. God has given us his mind. And not only has he given us his mind, he's given us the shield, or he's given us the helmet of salvation to cover his mind, those thoughts, to protect those thoughts because the enemy is constantly shooting lies. You're no good. You're trash. You're dirty. You're depressed. You, all these things. And guess what? We believe them. We believe them. We end up agreeing with him. We forfeit his mind because we forfeit his thoughts. Therefore, we can't walk in his way. So it's his mind. It's his will. What is his will? His will is surrendered by you drinking of the cup of death. Taking up the cross. says, hey, if you don't come after me, you're not worthy of me. And then when you come after him, I remember... Uh, a, a couple of years ago, I had a dream and I was, I was, I was walking around and there was a, a cross and I went to pick it up and I knew it was my cross. You know what the cross is in the Bible? It's the instrument of death. When you pick up the instrument of death and you carry it, it means that your flesh has to die. It means it's like you sit in the garden of Gethsemane and you drink of the cup of suffering. It says, not my will, but yours be done. You turn over your will to God. You relinquish it. Willingly. It's what a bond servant does. You want to walk and walk with God, you'd be a bond servant. I saw when I was in Liberia, um, just being over there, I saw what a bond servant looked like. I saw it. For one of the first times in my life, I looked at it and I saw what it meant to lay your life down for people. And I saw a humility that I've never seen, a meekness that I've never seen that provoked me. I want to know Jesus like that. I want to serve people like that. I want to love people like that. I want to lay down my life so people can build on the foundation of that. So you give your will. Some of you are fighting against God because you won't let your will go. You're kicking, like Paul says, it's hard. Like he said to Saul, it's hard to kick against the goats. It's hard. Some of you are fighting against God because you, mindsets, because of things, ways that you want things to happen. Well, God's saying, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it a different way, and if you'll let me get in the way, and you'll get out of the way, and you'll give me your will, you'll get my will. Emotions. We have emotions. Listen, let me tell you something. God is very emotional. Let me say that again. God is very emotional. Look in your Bible. He's excited. He's joyful. He's, he's angry. God does get angry. There's a love side of God and there's an anger side of God. God hates the things that keep you from him. He has emotions just like you do. But his emotions are on the agenda of his destiny for you. His emotions are not, he's not double-minded. He's not, he's not wayward. He doesn't have bad thoughts for you. He's not depressed. He's not angry at himself. He doesn't see you the way that you see yourself. He doesn't have fear of man. He doesn't suffer with rejection. He doesn't suffer with abandonment. He's not an orphan. His emotions are in tune with everything that the father thinks about him. What does the father think about you? When he looks at Jesus, he sees you. Those same emotions, those same emotions that Jesus had for the Father, that, that, she, that, that the Father had for Jesus. Those are the emotions that you can tap into, that your emotions. You see, God wants us to not be, he wants us to be made whole, which means spirit, soul, and body physically wants to restore you. Spiritually wants to restore you. Emotionally, he wants to restore you. This is how we will sit in this seat. This is how we will, be, we, will, we will become a fragrance, an aroma of Christ in our city. Right? Not just teaching it, but becoming it. In him, we live and we move and we have our being. Some of us are stagnant. But God wants us to step up and move in him and move and have our being in him. We want to abide in the Lord. It's very simple, guys. 
intimacy. Everything revolves around relationship. It's all about intimacy. It's very simple. Everything starts with him. He's not, he's, not, he's not a taskmaster, but it all starts with him. And when you do that, man, you want him in every decision. Man, God, what do you, want, what do you think about this, Jesus? Because his answers are always the best ones. They work much better than yours. Amen? So he wants to give us his mind, his will, and his emotions. And as he gives us his mind, his will, and his emotions... He's given you the kingdom. And he's given you the kingdom. Guess what's happening? Heaven is breaking out and hell is breaking loose. What do I mean by that? You become a gate for God. It says in, it says in, in a Genesis, it says that where the house of God met the gateway of heaven, that's where Bethel was. The house of God, you are the house of God, meeting the gateway of heaven manifesting Jesus, manifesting Christ in our city. Strongholds falling down, demons being cast out, the blind seeing, the, the sick being healed, the lepers being cleansed. This is, the, this is the fruit of that. You can't go seeking that without having this. You have this, you have that. Signs and wonders follow those who believe. But we don't believe. Because we want to do the miracles, but we don't want to have the relationship. Which means that we want to prostitute the gospel. We want the results, but we don't want to do what it takes to get those results. But we will be a company of people that will not prostitute the gospel. Many of you are going to walk in signs and wonders and miracles and healings. And guess what? There's three things that you don't take from God. You don't take the gold. You don't take the glory. And a, a man told me one time, you don't touch the girls. And ladies, don't touch the men. Amen. <laughs> don't touch his gold. Don't touch his glory. And don't touch the opposite gender. Stay away. Because when you start moving, guess what? They're coming. They're coming. The enemy will send them. And it's a sign to you that the enemy knows who you are. Oh, well. It's fine. You know why he's so attracted to you, though? The enemy. Because let me tell you what's about to happen. Verse Hebrews 2, 13. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? When you take this seat, God is seated in heavenly places. And he's putting his feet on the chair. And in you, in your obedience and bringing the kingdom here, the, the heaven is breaking out and hell is breaking loose. And hell is relinquishing its rights over the people's lives in this city. Because they're bound by it. We have a bunch of Lazaruses in this city that think they're alive but they're dead and they stink. Because they're bound by religion. They're bound by, they haven't yet experienced the resurrection power in Christ Jesus. They haven't yet understand what it means to sit at the right hand of God. And, uh, and to sit at a God who says, holy, holy, Isaiah 6. I've seen the Lord and the train of his robe fills the temple. Holy, holy, I am sit amongst a people of unclean lips. I'm carrying the burden of the Lord. I... I can't do anything about it. I have to preach the gospel. I've got this fire shut up in my bones. I have to preach the truth. I have to declare the word of the Lord. If they listen, they listen. If they don't, they don't. But I'm going out, and I'm going out in God. And if they kill me, they kill me. But I'll love my life even unto death. That's the gospel. That's his goodness. And it's his goodness that leads men to repentance. So you become the gate, you become the messenger of his goodness, calling men to repentance. The fear of the Lord coming upon those that do not know Jesus. Gripped with fear, wanting to get in the kingdom. Totally throws out your little Ten Commandments evangelism tactics. Don't need them. You don't need to tell people they're sinners when you're carrying the glory of God. People will tremble and fall on their knees. And they will get saved and they will, they will know their God. And they will do great exploits. 
So when we live in an ascended lifestyle in relationship with Jesus, we are making the enemies of God his footstool. He says the people will be willing in the day of his power. Are you willing? Are you willing? If you're willing, then you step into relationship with Jesus. You have his mind, his will, and his emotions, and you release the kingdom of God in your workplace, in your friends, in your family, and you take people, you take them out and into the kingdom one by one by one by one by one by one by one. You have, an, you have a mandate from heaven. You have a mandate to be Jesus, to preach Jesus, to bring Jesus into the, into the kingdom. I work at a place and because I'm at that place and I'm preaching Jesus. God is blessing that organization. I don't go around saying it, but I know he does because Jesus lives inside of me and Jesus is in that place. And because Jesus lives inside of me, he lives inside of them and he's blessing them. And they don't, you know, that's every single one of you should see the favor of God, the hand of the Lord coming upon Elijah. Coming upon those who serve God, who, who, are, who, who release the favor of God because the gateway of heaven's opening up. You can't help but be blessed. You can't help but have the favor of God. It's not about you. All goes back to relationship. All goes back to ascended lifestyle. All goes back to obedience. And prophetically, let me tell you, let me tell you where we're at. Hebrews eleven seven. 7, this is where we're at right now. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Everybody say, not yet seen. Moved with godly fear. Say, moved with godly fear. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Noah obeyed, being divinely warned. Let me tell you something. There are some divine warnings being released right now from heaven of things not yet seen. What were we talking about earlier? Calling things forth, not as they are, but as they will be. There are things that are being released in heaven right now that are not yet seen, but God is releasing them to, uh, to people to declare, listen, it's time to get your ark and it's time to build it. You know, the ark of God, Noah was building that boat and people said, you are flipping crazy. Guess who the ark is now? It's you. It lives inside of you. It's the presence of God. It's the altar of God living inside of you. You better start building your ark because there's a flood coming. It's a flood of, of the glory of God. And people that don't have an ark, they will be overcome by it. They'll call it judgment. But the people that have, a, have, have an ark and have built a place for the God, their whole households will be saved. Everyone will know Jesus and it will be the most glorious time of their life. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings. People are going to be so gripped with fear. God's drawing a line in the sand and he's saying, listen, you're going to be on this side or that side. But depending on which side you're on will be, will be the measure to how you will be able to respond. If you want to be a first responder, you'll prepare your ark. God will take you to a high place. You'll catch the wave and you'll ride it out. You know that song, Riders on the Storm. Unto this day we're born. Riders on the Storm. I was walking into Pittsburgh a couple years ago and I heard that. Riders on the Storm. Riders on the Storm. Get A storm's coming. Listen. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Elijah said, it's going to rain. Go tell Ahab it's going to rain. I'm telling you right now, Ahab is a spirit of religion that partners with Jezebel. But I'm telling you, it's going to rain. The goodness of God is going to flow in this city. And he's going to do it through you. He's going to move in your house. And listen, you don't have to go around thinking about what are they going to think, you know, when I have to tell them that they're, you know, that they're not right with God and, and, and they're living in sin. And listen, when you build your ark, it says this, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Do you know by him building the ark of God, he condemned the very things of the world. He didn't have to go around condemning the world because his actions, his righteousness spoke for themselves. The righteousness will speak for itself. We don't have to condemn the world. We do what God says in righteousness. His righteousness will automatically call forth the giants in the land and the giants will come in the land and they will be our bread. Numbers. 
That's some book. That's numbers. The giants will be our bread. I'm telling you, there's some giants in this land. They are under the feet of Jesus. Under the feet of God, as you take your seat in heavenly places. Do you believe that? It's in your Bible. It's in this. It's in the Word of God. Let's go there. Hallelujah. It says in Hebrews 2, verse 6, But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is a man you're mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Whoa! Glory and honor you've been crowned with. And set him over the works of your hands. God, his hands is upon you and he's given you glory and honor. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Take your seat. Sit down. When you sit with him, see your feet touch the ground. Everything is in subjection to your feet as you take that place. Everything. Remember Hebrews eleven seven. 7. Divinely warned of things not yet seen. The sword goes both ways. We call things forth not as they are, as they will be. But we're also saying, hey, you know what? There's some stuff coming. And listen, God's judgments are righteous. You don't believe God's a judge, then I'm, I'm sorry, but he is. And if you don't believe that, 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 um, that, that he's righteous in his judgment. Read your Bible. Because his righteousness comes in. His judgment comes in. To, to separate the things that have taken you away from him. To judge them. Judge those things that he's already put in subjection. So we're praying God let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let's guess what. You're calling judgment on those things. That are, that are not of God. And when people are living in chaos. And they're saying what in the world is going on. You can tell them. Man, God is, God is setting you up to meet with him. You have to tell him, well, you're under judgment. You know, you, you know God, it's an opportunity for you to step into his goodness. Does that make sense? It's, where are you looking at it? If you look at it from down here, it looks bad. You look at it from up there in your seat, it looks great. <laughs> What's your view? What's your viewpoint? For in man that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. Everybody paying attention. Look at me. Read it again. For in that he put all in subjection. Everybody say all. The Greek word of all is all. Under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. Nothing. No thing. That's every piece of matter. Everything that you can see. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. How many of you have some issues in your life right now that you're not seeing any resolve on? Ta-da. We don't see it. We don't see it. But the reality is, where do you live? If you live in heavenly places, it's already done. If you're living here, you're waiting for it to happen. And God's waiting for you to take your seat. Perspective. Do you have the mind of Christ? Do you have the will? Have you surrendered your will? Are your emotions operating out of your flesh? Here's the prescription. I'm going to go ahead and write it out to you tonight. Take up your cross. You give him your baggage. He gives you his luggage. Divine. It's called the divine exchange. Come to, come to me all you who are weary. And broken. And I will give you rest. That's what he's saying. Chapter 3, therefore the holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling. Man, I'm calling you guys to the heavenly calling tonight. 
partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Hmm. God's building a house. Take your seat. Hebrews 4. You know what the fruit of this is? Some of you have been asking for it. This is the result of what you've been asking for. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Who's coming short of rest in here? This is the rest. This is the path to rest. This is the way. Walk ye in it. No other way. Wide is the gate to destruction. Narrow is the gate to life. This is where the house of God meets the gateway of heaven. The door of the Lord. Presence of God. Holiness. This is changes lives. It transforms people. This message is setting people free. This message will set cities free. People that seek this, that pursue this. We've not yet arrived, but we've left. We're novices. But we just want to know Jesus. We just want to touch the hem of his garment. We just want to seek his face. We just want to be like him. We want to we want to give it all. How many of you tonight, you just, man, you just want to give it to Jesus. You want to walk with Jesus. Is that your heart? Is it? Is it your heart? Okay. Because he says here, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in the rebellion. If you're hearing his voice right now, stand up with me. Do not harden your hearts. There's a great opportunity, but the other side of the opportunity is to miss it and to rebel against the very thing that he wants. And, you know, we've we've rebelled against God because we haven't known him. We've, we've, we've seen an image of the Lord in ways that our parents gave us a display of the Lord that wasn't really true and depicted. We had, we didn't have good fathers. We didn't have great mothers. We haven't had good role models. We haven't had good mentors. We haven't had good spiritual fathers. All that has kept us from the reward of he says, seek me first. And all things will be added. Said, He's our reward. And I, I just want to pray tonight, just for a few minutes. Um, Rachel, if you come on up here, just that the Lord would minister to you, um, guys. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is a very simple message tonight. I mean, it's it's where the Lord's calling us. It's the house He's calling us to be. This is this is what we're going to call you to be. We're we're going to call you to be accountable to God, who God says you are. I'm going to call you to be who God says you are. When I see you, I see you by the Spirit. It says, know no man after the flesh, but know them by the Spirit. When I see you by the Spirit, I'm calling you to be that. And so, so you know, prophetically, some of us, if, we're, if we seem like, man, you just won't leave me alone. It's like, well, listen, we won't leave you alone. We won't let you not step into this. It's your choice, but it's just, it's just going to be this simple. If you don't want to walk in who God's called you to be, it's just going to be really hard to be part of this community. And, and I say that with all fear and trepidation, but none of us came here to, you know, to be part of a big crowd. We're not, we're not here to do anything special other than just see his kingdom come here. And listen, once he does it here, we're going to go somewhere else. Some of you are going to go places. Some of you are going to be sent out of the city. 
to go and plant, to go and build. And you're going to be saying Hebrews 3, 4, somebody's got to build the house, but it's builder and maker's God. Got any builders in here? I think we do. But God wants to bring all men into repentance because he's good. He's a good father. And so I just, under, under the Lord tonight, I, I, God, I honor you. Thank you that you've counted us worthy more than the angels. You've given us, you've crowned us with glory and honor. Lord, that we would walk worthy in the manner that which we've been called. And that we would put on Jesus tonight. Lord, there's no going back. There's no turning around. We've, some of you are seeing the treasure that's been hidden in the field and you're going to sell everything you have to buy that field that has that treasure. You can't buy the treasure. And that's not saying that you're going to sell everything you have tonight. Okay, don't get me wrong. That means that you're going to sell out. You're going to put him first. God needs some of you to have businesses and, and to gain wealth so you can, so you can be a resource because never has he seen the righteous forsaking or begging for bread. Some of you are going to be very wealthy for the kingdom's sake. For you to give it all away would be a mistake because God wants you to get the seed and sow it. Eat the bread and sow the seed. Don't eat your seed and don't sow your bread. Know the difference. Know that which has been given to you is for you and no one else. And that which is given to you to give to others is you're just stewarding it. So I speak to the hearts in this room in the name of Jesus. God, I, I speak to them that they would burn with a passion and a desire to make your name famous. That they would love their lives even unto death and that they would radiate with the glory and the love of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and baptize in fire tonight. I pray Acts 1.8 that they would be endued with power from on high to be witnesses to Judea, Jerusalem, to Samaria, to all ends of the world. That this company of people would be a people that would go to those that you call them to like the Moravians. That they would be a people of prayer and intercession that would hear your voice and be first responders. That they would worship in spirit and truth. And that they would get around those that would build them up. That they would be burning torches. That they would be the coming messengers of this hour. I pray that you bless them, God. I pray that you keep them. That you would cause your face to shine upon them. I pray it in the mighty name of Jesus. A blessing that is without reproach. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you as a father. Now I can bless you as a father because I have a son. But I bless you spiritually as a father in the Lord. I bless you to ascend the hill of the Lord. And I bless you to increase and multiply. I bless your homes to carry the presence of God and to be a dispenser of his ways and his truth. And I bless you. I bless your feet. May you have a ceaseless and continual supply of oil. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I don't think we're done yet. Listen, I saw you. I saw you. I know you told me you were a beautician. But the Lord was just showing me that, that your skill is, is not yet. Is, beauty is going to be your skill, but the beauty is going to be in simplicity. And as you sit people down and and you talk with them and you converse with them and you, and you love on them. 
the Lord was just showing me you're going to bring like a, a demasking off people's lives. And you're going to bring out the inner beauty of, of who they are and uh, the simplicity of Jesus. And um, there's a beauty inside of you that, that um, people will be drawn to and it's purity. So I bless you um, to be pure. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Bless you to see God. Bless you to ascend and bless you to do all those things in your heart that, that God's put in your heart to, to travel and to, to have children. Amen. Isn't he good? How good is he? <laughs> so good. James. Come here, man. Come here, Eric. Come here. This is, we gotta, before we go, I want us to just pray for, pray for them. He's just, he's new to the States and God's got a plan. Um, some of which he knows about and some of he doesn't. <laughs> but uh, uh, how many of you would consider yourself a, you know, an outsider or insider? You know, you, see, you think yourself as an insider or an outsider. You, who's an insider in here? How many find yourself in being, you know, the insider? How many are outsiders? How many of you don't even know what I'm talking about? All right. Well, it, listen, an insider has inside information. Okay. For instance, you know, where you work, people are coming to you, you have inside information, people are just constantly coming to you. An outsider is from the outside in. You, you, you know, like James here, James is an outsider. You know, Eldad and Medad, they were outsiders. Moses was an insider. He grew up in the palace, but he um, eventually found out his, his people were Jewish and he became an outsider and then he brought them insiders. So it's okay, sorry. Uh, I was going to talk about that tonight, but didn't get to go there. But um, just want to bless him. Guys, just extend your hands to him. This is a mighty man of God. And uh, we just want to receive him and receive his the mandate on his life here in Dallas. And um, God, we just thank you for his life. We thank you that you have divinely brought him here. We thank you that you are going to guide his path. You're going to gird him up and he's going to fly with your spirit. We bless him to be a builder. And we say we rejoice. The people rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. And God, I thank you that you called him to build alongside of Eric and be a, a man of foresight and a man of understanding and a man of counseling and a man of administration. And we just thank you for his life. We thank you that that his integrity would be, um, God, it, it would just, it would just increase his character in you would just be known. And God, I thank you for the fear of the Lord that just rests upon him, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and that he'll be, he'll be a speaker of truth, Lord. And I'm reminded of Amos. It came from another city and God, you've called this man from another nation here. And, and uh, we bless him to uh, do everything you've called him to do. And you'll withhold nothing from those who walk uprightly. And God, this is a man who walks uprightly and consecrated and holy unto the Lord. He's a priest. And we bless him. James, we bless you to ascend the hill of the Lord. We bless you to be fruitful and multiply. And we bless you to be a bridge. A bridge to the nations. A bridge in this city. And one that will carry the message of the gospel to the poor, to the poor in spirit. God loves the poor in spirit. So we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. You want to say something? Thank you. Well, I want to bless God for my life, for the lives of everyone here today. Um, I'm not worthy to stay in the presence of God, but because of his grace, upon my life that I'm here today. 
is because of your prayer with us, your support for the Liberian people, for everything that you've done. I want to bless God for that. Thank you. Eric, love you, man. It's one of my buddies. He's one of the troublemakers of Israel over there. Such the Jesus virus, man. He's spreading the Jesus virus all over the nations, man. God, who would have thought? Who would have thought it? All right, we bless you guys. Peace out. Spread the light. We got a couple. Listen, real quick, where is Kirsten at? There she is. Kirsten got accepted to Iris Ministries in Mozambique. Come on. Come on. I'm going to have her share about that, not tonight, but, but over the next couple of weeks. Um, I want to encourage you guys to sow into that. She's going to be getting a letter together, and, um, and she's going to be getting it out. And uh, any, any, any offerings or anything sown to, to, uh, on, on her behalf, I just I ask if you guys sow it. Make sure you write Mozambique on there. Don't write her name because it, it's just a tax, uh, tax deal. But uh, we want to bless her, and, um, and we're believing God for, for all the funds and uh, however he wants to do it. But uh, I, be I believe it's the Lord and, um, and I believe in the call of God on our life. And so if you guys, the Lord lays it on your heart to sow into that, then uh, feel free to do that. And um, something else I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting to do. Oh, we've got two couples going to Pittsburgh tomorrow. The Sparks and the Sorrels are going to be going uh, to uh, our extended family, the King's Kids, the Sunburn Encounters up in Pittsburgh. And uh, so we bless them to, to just go up there and uh, they're going to have a, a three-day encounter. And, and um, you guys that have never been, y'all need to go sometime. And uh, it's pretty amazing. Those guys up there are, are, are family to us. They're just a, diff a different tribe, but we're, I'll be in Israel with them in um, a couple months. And we'll be uh, over there just at the house of prayer and just doing stuff in the spirit. But uh, I love you guys so much. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful for our relationship. I'm grateful for our, our, our time together that we get to walk and spend, and spend life together. I don't take it for granted. And, um, you know, I bless you. I really do. I really want to see every single one of you um, walk in the fullness of everything God has for you. Jeff Nutt, everything. Everything. Nothing. Nothing behind. All right. Love you guys. Bless you.